Well, Pat Olson is we're joined courtside by USF head coach Todd Golden as the Dons win a thriller here today, 83-82 over BYU. Coach, before we get into it, you got to explain the new wet look here. You, you came up, your your dress shirt looks a little bit damp. So uh, sure. what transpired down there in the locker room? Oh, man, it was it was a little wet in there. I'm not going to lie, you know, that we... Uh, We've met really quickly as a staff, and, uh, you know, by the time we got in there, they had just got Khalil, and, uh, you know, we, we were the recipients of a nice little water shower as well, and, and honestly, it was just a really fun, great experience. I think the guys were obviously really excited about the win, and, uh, you know, when you have a game like this, you, you got to celebrate and enjoy these because uh, they, they're few and far between. Yeah, let's talk about how the, the way the ball game transpired, because in the first half, BYU's offense was nearly unstoppable. They had it going. Yeah. You guys put a run on late in the half to draw within a pair, and then BYU scores the last five of the half. They're up seven. Yeah. Second half, they extend to 14. But for the second year in a row, USF overcame a 14-point second-half deficit against this good BYU team. Last year it was in Provo, sure. you might recall, and sure. it happened here again today, and it was a, a massive run. Uh, it was too big a run even to remember. I think it was 30-5 to five was the scoring spurt over the span of about seven and a half minutes, and Khalil Shabazz was a big part of that run. Yeah, you know, he, uh, I mean, shoot, he was 10 for 10 from the field, 6 for 6 from three, six for seven from the line and uh you know i made sure to talk to him in the locker room hey i need you a little more focus on those free throws you can't miss one okay now i was giving him a hard time he was absolutely phenomenal uh, i was so proud of him he's he's given us a great lift all year he's uh he's been a, a stud in his role whether he's starting or coming off the bench we know he's going to give us a consistent really great effort and uh he was obviously phenomenal but jamari did a great job with his floor game and then i look at tavi yurkatam as a guy that was uh you know he didn't score much he didn't, he didn't score at all. He didn't think he scored at all. But, but boy, when he was but in the boy, game, he took Childs out of his rhythm. When didn't he, he was in the game, we were plus 24, uh, and that's hard to do. He was absolutely terrific. So proud of him. And uh, man, this is just a, a great win for our program. Yeah, you know, Coach, that that spurt. We you know you, we talked about you know Shabazz scoring and Yerkatam Garden, but that spurt doesn't happen if you don't change the momentum of the way BYU was offensively. They were in rhythm, and then they went one stretch where they went three for 12. They just couldn't find many shots at all. They had trouble you know, finding you know, baskets all of a sudden. So what changed defensively there all of a sudden in that second half? Well, what we did, we started pressing them. We, we had to get up in them. We had to disrupt the rhythm a little bit, and uh, you know, we just weren't able to give them enough problems in the half court. Uh, which, to be honest, you know, it's not super surprising. They're one of the best offensive teams in the country. So we were, you know, we were at that little fine line, and I think we were down 14 with 16 minutes to go. And that's when, you know, Kevin, Mamadou, Vinny, and I got together. We said, hey, let's, let's speed them up a little bit. we got to kind of roll the dice. Let's make this game a little more volatile and, and see what the results are. And sure enough, that gave us a little bit of a lift. It disrupted them offensively. They weren't able to play with that same rhythm, that same pace. They started taking some quicker shots that weren't as good as the ones they were getting on us in the half court. And uh, thank you. And sure enough, uh, you know, we, we went on that huge run. At the tail end of the ball game, Yurkatam fouled Childs on the perimeter. It was yep. uh, very late. And we were kind of wondering on press row if that was by intent because Childs is not the best free throw shooter. It worked out okay for you because he made the front end, uh, missed the front end of the one and one. No, it, it was intentional. Uh, we we got together as a staff, and then Jonathan Sapphire, who's my resident, you know, late game or late half situation guy, we got together and he said, "Hey, he always a 59% foul shooter. Uh, they're in the one and one. If he catches it, let's use it." I said, "You know what? That's that's a, that's the right play." So we we talked to our guys. Let's not front him. Let's let him get an easy catch, and once he does, Tavi, make a hard play on the ball. If you get a steal, great. If not, it goes to the line. Put him in the situation where they have to make two to tie. Worst case scenario, we have the last possession to win the game on our home floor. I would have taken that when, uh, when the game got tipped. So great execution by Tavi to take the foul. Even better execution, the fact that he missed it and we got the rebound. <laughs> yeah, went down. Help Childs and all that. Absolutely, yeah. but you know what? The percentages are, you know, as a 60% shooter, you're only going to make two 36% of the time. Coach, uh, you know, the... Uh, the uh, end of the ball game. It was nice to see your veteran senior. You want seniors on the line. Jordan Retino went up there with 4.9 to go. He had a chance really to ice the game because BYU is not going to get two possessions in 4.9 with no timeouts, and that's exactly what happened. And Jordan knocked them both in. Drilled them. He's a uh 
he's done a phenomenal job from the foul line all year. I'm really proud of his growth over you know the past year from the line. He's gotten confident, and you know in certain situations, uh, you expect your older guys to step up, and that's exactly what he did, knocking both of those down in the one and one and uh, you know, made the first, which has a little more pressure in that scenario, and made the second, and to your point, once that was the case, said get back, don't foul, stay on the ground. And let him shoot the three. Let him shoot the three. And they did. They yeah. shot a three, and they made it a, a one-point one point game, game at the buzzer. Expired. But hey, you win by one, you win by 30 at the end of the night. It's still a W for the USF Dons here at home. Yep. Next up, you go to San Diego. Yep. You know, you can't obviously get too much up high on that emotional roller coaster because there's another ball game coming up on the road in five days. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. We are going to enjoy this one tonight, Yep. a little bit tomorrow, and then when Monday comes around, it's full on towards the Toreros. Um, but you know, when, when you play this game, you coach this game, if you don't enjoy games like this, then you're, you're not doing it for the right reasons. And uh, I hope our guys enjoy it. I know I certainly am. I'm really proud of our program. I think this is a big win for us, man. This is, uh, we've been awfully close in some big games this year. We had Stanford down the whole game. On Thursday night, we had St. Mary's down the whole game, but we haven't been able to finish the job against one of these upper echelon teams. And, and the bottom line is BYU is a top 20 program. They're, they're top 20 on Kempom, 17 on Torvik. I mean, this team's really, really good, better than they've been in a long time. And we did a great job defending our home floor. Coach, I can feel your enthusiasm through the uh, headset microphone. Enjoy it, enjoy it tonight, and uh, we'll see you uh, uh, down in Southern California a bit later in the week. Thanks a lot, Pat. I appreciate it. All right, the Dons win it. It was a fun ball game today, 83-82.